Hi, this is Leah from Palm and Grace, and in this video, we are going to go over our group travel cost calculator spreadsheet for Google Sheets. I actually created most of the spreadsheet while I was studying abroad because the groups I was traveling with while abroad needed a better way to track who owed who money and how much. So that is what this spreadsheet will aim to do. Let's jump right into it. The very first tab that you are going to want to fill out is the start tab. Now, as you can see, I already have this filled out but to fill it out, all you have to do is simply input your currency symbol. I did this by just typing in the dollar sign. But if you have a different currency symbol, you can easily copy and paste it from the web. And then you can add in your currency code below. There's also an important note beneath that which says you will need to ensure that all payments are in the currency you include above for the most accurate calculations. A currency conversion calculator is included later in this spreadsheet. So we will go through the currency conversion calculator after. But what this is essentially saying is if I had a cost that was in euros, I would want to convert it to my currency, the US dollar, in this spreadsheet. And again, we'll go through that later on. Next, instead of jumping right to the group cost tab, I'm going to go to the conversions tab first. And in this tab, you can convert two different things. You can do exchange rates to find out how much of a certain currency is worth in another currency. And you can also easily split costs. So let's take a look at both. In the exchange rate box, let's consider the example of converting 100 euros to US dollars. To do this under the from code, I'm going to do the euro. Next, I'm going to add in the exchange rate from euro to USD, and you can do it in this form down here. And now you can see I've done my quick Google search euro to USD exchange rate, and I can see that one euro equals 1.17 US dollars. So I'm going to add in that 1.17 here. Now I'm going to do the amount. So let's use 100 for example, and then I'll add in the code that I am exchanging it to. And now I can see that 100 euros is equal to $117 in USD. Now you definitely don't have to use this section. You could totally figure it out right in Google like this, but we've included it just in case. Now with rounding, you'll get more exact results using Google versus the conversion calculator up here. So again, it's totally up to you what you want to use. It may actually even be quicker to use Google, but I wanted to include the option to do it in the spreadsheet here too. And then let's take a look at an example of equally splitting costs. So what this is doing is essentially if you have a large cost that you're splitting equally among a bunch of people, you can easily calculate how much each person would owe here. So if I have $1,000, for example, and I want to split it 12 ways, I can see how much it would cost per person and you can do it with whatever amounts you have. It's totally up to you. All right, next, let's finally go to the group cost tab. Now this tab may look a little overwhelming at first, but I'm going to break it down step-by-step step for you. One thing that I want to quickly note before we get into the details of this tab is that all of the blue rows and columns in this tab are fully automated, so you do not need to type anything into these rows or columns, including these rows up here and these columns over here as well. Before we get into the sections to the left, I'm actually going to go over to this area to the right, which is where we actually input and track the costs. Let's dive into this. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is add in the names of the people or the groups, if you would prefer to track by group, who are on your trip. So in this example trip right here, I have four different people who are on the trip. If for some reason you have someone who is not on the trip who is also paying for different things, then you can add in their name as well. Essentially, you're adding in the names or groups of anyone who is paying for parts of your trip. The section above each person tracks how much each person has paid, how much they have already paid back to others, and how much money is remaining for them to pay to others. So for example, in the instance of Emily, she has $250 to pay here and $100 to pay here, so she has $350 total to pay. Now, as you check boxes, once payments have been made, the numbers will automatically update. So as you can see, now it says that she has paid back $250, but she still has $100 remaining to pay. Over to the left, here's where we're going to add in the different transactions. So the first thing you're going to do is add in the name of the person who paid. You're going to want to make sure that you type in the names correctly for each person, as that will impact the calculations a little bit. But if you do happen to make an error, you can easily go back and fix it. Let's add in an example payment. In this payment, we're going to have Michael pay for show tickets, and the total is going to be $100.
Now I'm going to split the cost over here. So for example, if each person paid $25 for their ticket, I'm going to add in 25 under each person to the right. As you can see, when I add in the payments to the right, the total amount will update based on how much you've added. The reason for this is so that you can double check that you've added in the right amount of payments to equal the total payment. So for example, if I accidentally typed in 15 for someone, then I would notice, okay, my total amount isn't matching what I want it to be. So I must have made a mistake and then I can go back and fix it. This is also just in case there is different rounding. Now, since Michael paid for the show tickets, he won't have to pay himself back so we can automatically check him off. And as you can see, when I check this off, the number in these columns will update. $25 have been paid by Michael and the other people still have to pay him $75. Now you can add in a bunch of people into this list. Hopefully your group travels do not exceed the number of people in this list. And you can add in as many transactions down here as you would like. And again, you can add in different costs for each person. So for example, if you had a meal and some people spend more than others, you can add in those different prices. And if some people didn't pay for anything, like in this example right here, maybe Michael didn't go to dinner that night, then you don't have to add in any cost for them. Now that we've got a grasp on how this section works, let's scroll over to the left and take a look at these other areas. These areas to the left essentially break down how much has been paid and who owes who. This is a helpful area that essentially combines the numbers from over here for you so you can see how much you're owed by certain people and even for what things. In this first column to the left, you can simply see a total of how much has been paid overall up here and by each person down here. You can also see how much they have paid back and how much total remaining they have to pay to others. The payments owed section shows you all the payments that are owed to a specific person. So for example, if I select Michael from the dropdown, I can see that Michael is still owed $75 by the others for the show tickets. If I selected Linda, for example, I could see that Sarah still owes her $250 for flights and Emily still owes her $100 for dinner. So this section breaks down the specific transactions. Scrolling a little bit to the right, in this section, we can see how much the selected person owes to others. When you select a name from a dropdown, there should always be a zero in the amount unpaid because you don't owe money to yourself. However, since Emily is selected from this dropdown, we can see that she still owes Linda $100 and that she still owes Michael $25. And this is true if we scroll to the right. Under Emily, we can see that $100 still needs to be paid to Linda for dinner and $25 still needs to be paid to Michael for the show tickets. Now this section will combine transactions. So for example, if Michael bought dinner another night, now we can see that Emily would owe Michael $75 between these two transactions, which is reflected over here. So now Emily could easily just pay Michael the $75 and then check off all the transactions that were paid originally by Michael. So there are a lot of different numbers in the spreadsheet. However, it is a very clear way to track exactly who paid for what and how much money they are owed and by who. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you. Again, I hope you enjoy this spreadsheet. Thank you so much again for your purchase and thank you for watching.